Hi everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lynn show where I answer questions that hit Wikipedia.com daily. The best part of my job is that I get to meet commercial bakers from all over the world. So hey there, thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Lynn from Wikipedia, the world's largest resource for technical baking information and the only place you should go first when you need all your technical questions answered on the go. What I usually do on the show is to answer the questions that concerns commercial bakers. Yes, you know, when your QA manager tells you your loaves are not up to spec and your proofer and your oven are working just fine, but you don't know where the problem is. Who has the time to do an hour long research on the internet and sometimes come back with nothing. Well, this is what the show is for. Place any comments on the topics that you are researching on Wikipedia and I'll do my best to answer them on the show. Today's show is brought to you by Diosna. Do you have up to 1100 pound batches of sponge to make? Well, try out the Diosna wheat plant compact line for the flexible production of different sponges for your high speed lines. With variable stirring speeds, rest periods and temperature control, consistency in your sponges can be achieved, especially with the use of their start gut. Yes, they have sourdough starters. Finally, someone you can depend on when you accidentally throw away your mother dough. Need to learn more? Go to diasna.com today. Today's show is on sponge and dough. Sponge and dough, yes my favorite technique. You get to learn why later. It's the baker's best friend. Let's put it this way. The sponge and dough method is the most used method for commercial bread making in the US. It's a type of bulk fermentation. This process involves two stages. First, a light airy sponge is created through mixing about 50 to 70% of the flour, water, yeast and improving agents and allowing them to ferment. Next, the remaining ingredients are mixed into the sponge resulting in a dough. This method of producing bread is becoming popular again due to clean label initiatives that depend less on chemical dough development and more on natural dough maturation, which is experienced in the sponge fermentation process. About 70% of the flour, 40% of the water, and all the yeast are placed into the horizontal mixer. Mix the ingredients in the sponge on low till the dough cleans up. Then mix on high until it forms a homogeneous dough. The more you mix at this stage, the faster the dough will mature. We will talk later about the effect of hydration at this stage. Discharge the sponge into a greased trough with a target temperature of 76 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, and ferment for two and a half to four and a half hours, targeting an end temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. The fermentation room is set at a relative humidity of around 65%. This actually assists in preventing a skin formation. The sponge is ready for use when it reaches full maturation. This is determined by touch or a pull test in most bakeries. By this time, the sponge would have large air pockets and would contract rapidly at a tap. In the second stage, the sponge has its final mix. So hoist the sponge and empty the trough into the final mixer. Add in the remaining ingredients into the mixer and mix until the dough fully develops. The final dough can be processed by a rapid processing method. Immediately sized and shaped or given a short period of bulk fermentation. Go to our gluten hydration page where we examine this theory. Gluten hydration is key to help unfold the proteins in the flour and to make it more functional in its cross-links. The more hydration, the stronger the gluten network gets. 
That is why overnight doughs are so good to work with, if you ever had the chance to try this. Instead of mixing a dough to full development, mix it till the flour and water and yeast comes together into a ball. Let this ball ferment for eight hours. What's happening during this period besides fermentation is the hydration of the proteins. Together with the enzymes from the yeast that helps clip the larger proteins into smaller proteins that unfolds faster, the gluten network keeps hydrating and becomes more functional. This is why after eight hours of fermentation in that ball, the dough just needs a few folds and voila, you have a fully developed dough. Therefore, gluten hydration works, which means if you give more work or mixing in the sponge stage, it will be fully functional and matured in a shorter period of time. Try this. Give your sponges an extra minute of mix time and I will guarantee that you will reach a dough maturation stage faster. The quick answer is no. To really explain this question, let's get back to the purpose of fermentation. The purpose of sponge fermentation is for the production of carbon dioxide, alcohol, and enzymes that are needed for dough hydration or dough maturation. So remember, when you ferment, you have to look for these two things. These two are actually separate actions and dough maturation can depend on point one. But dough maturation can also depend on how much the dough hydrates at mixing. So this is why mixing more at the sponge stage matters and mixing till full development at the sponge stage matures the dough faster and you will achieve a bulk fermentation faster. If you really want to quicken sponge fermentation, the answer is to put more time into mixing the dough and not into increasing the room temperature. The key is not the volume, but dough maturation. How fast can you get to dough maturation is the limiting factor. What is dough maturation? It's like when the dough is at equilibrium for extensibility and elasticity. To do this, as mentioned above, the gluten proteins in the dough needs to hydrate enough to unfold and function. Without the proper hydration, fermentation can take a longer time to happen. Remember, the key here is dough maturation and how fast can you get there? All right, let's take a break here to give our sponsor a shout out. This episode is brought to you by Diosna. Did you know that Diosna's Wendell mixer is different because it has counter-rotating mixing tools? I know, the Wendell's mixing tool looks weird, like infinity symbols, but they are like that for a reason. And because they are counter-rotating, they expose more surface area on the flower particles for hydration. This leads to faster hydration and therefore quicker dough development, shortening your mixing times. With the ability to handle batches up to 1300 pounds, this is a big deal. Faster mixing times means lower dough temperatures. Lower dough temps mean, well, better quality products coming out of the proofer. So yes, the mixer is important. So go to diosna.com today to learn more about the Wendell mixer. Well, it really depends on your fermentation time. If you want your dough to mature faster at the bulk fermentation stage, then yes, place the dough conditioners in there. More residence time for the dough conditioners to work at this stage will prep it properly for the dough pump and divider down the line. However, please note, if the dough conditioners are enzymes, you have to treat it with care. The best is to ask your ingredients supplier if adding in the enzyme-based dough conditioners into the sponge would be helpful or hurtful. One more note, if you use green flour, I would advise for you to add the dough conditioners into the sponge stage. 
Green flower needs the most help in dough maturation because it hardly has any time to oxidize and strengthen. I hope this answers your question. Sometimes when it hits the fan and your line breaks down, your sponge could be sitting there for hours. Some bakers will revive it with more yeast and flour, but that takes a skill. If you are doubtful on the vitality of your sponge, the best bet is to portion it into thirds and reuse it in thirds for the upcoming sponge batches. Whatever you decide, please, please, please do not throw away your sponge or this is gonna happen. If throwing away the dough makes the most sense, please always put it through the oven to deactivate the yeast before dumping it away. It may save you from many embarrassing Facebook posts. So when you grow, expand, and if you want to invest in a sponge and dough system, what are the advantages? The advantages are less mixing time and energy. It is the most versatile dough system in bread production from the production of artisan bread to hamburger buns. There is a need for less or no dough conditioners, especially if you use aged flour. There is an increase in aroma, flavor, and shelf life. The disadvantages are that it requires more equipment and therefore more floor space is needed, making it more expensive. And it also needs a longer processing time from mixer to packaging with more sanitation time involved. Therefore, these results in higher labor costs. If you want to learn more about dough systems, please buy our ebook. All right, that's all for this segment today. Need more questions on sponge and dough answered? Send them to askdrlin at bakerpedia.com. Thank you for joining me today on Ask Dr. Lin. As you know, Bakerpedia thrives on sponsorships. We can't and I can't do what I do here without our sponsors. So I'm thankful to sponsors like Dayasna, the dough experts. Dayasna's brand of spiral mixers are well known with commercial bakers. When I was at Days Killer Bread, back in the days before it was sold, we would salivate over new Dayasna mixers because it was a workhorse. Mixers like the premium spiral mixer PSPV can mix up to 660 pounds and they would mix all day and all night. So if you want a workhorse for a mixer, go to diosna.com today to learn more. All right, before I go, please like and subscribe to this channel. Till the next time, bakers, mix it all up.